then we got near the time when this performance of the play of Daniel was going to be given, I thought, gee, how are we ever going to get all this together? It's in Latin. It wasn't memorized yet. We had costumes. There were people working on the costumes, and we had to rehearse up there at the cloisters, and we, oh, and I can remember thinking, this is never going to come off. We're never going to be able to do this. We were about a week away from when it was the first performance was to be given and terrified. I can remember the director asking at one time, it all being in Latin, the director asking, uh, what comes next? <laughs> Which is a funny thing for a director to say. We, we had to figure out, well, it's this scene after that scene, that's what we do. We had a narrator with a text written by W.H. Auden. Uh, which told the Bible story, and of course was in kind of it, dealing with the play of Daniel. It was in English, so an audience who didn't speak all the Latin or understand the Latin would know what was going on. And it was a very, very successful way of doing it. Anyway, we got to the dress rehearsal, and it was, well, we managed to get through it, but I thought, oh dear, I don't know what the performance is going to be like. But as sometimes happens, and I'm sure most professional uh, musicians will, would agree with this, it all pulls through. Something, everybody comes together, everything comes together, everybody does his best, and it was a very, very good performance and got wonderful notices. And because this had been given um, only to the sort of sponsors of the Metropolitan Museum as a kind of Christmas offering or holiday offering to them uh, at the cloisters, it only seated, you know, 250 people. And the reviews all said this should be, the public should see this. It's got to be seen by the public. It's such a great, unique, unusual thing. And so beautifully done. So we, we gave several additional performances at the Cloisters, but still you're only talking maybe if it were four, like a thousand people. So we decided to bring it down to, um, I think the first year it was at Riverside Church. And we gave several additional performances there. And of course, with the, the filled church, there were many, many more people that saw it. And then it was given subsequently every year at Christmas time for uh, five or eight years, I guess, after that, in different places. But it was always very successful. It was a wonderful recording made of it. And that's around to this day, and people still talk about it as being a very unique and wonderful thing. And it was a great experience for me. Now, following um, things with the, the, the Philharmonic, Bernstein used me quite a little bit. He had uh, background music for the Lark, the Ennui play with uh, Julie Harris, and he was asked to write some background music for that, and because I had sung for him, and he had some notion about my voice and what he wanted to do, and he wrote some very, very nice music for that, which was simply background music. And I remember he said, uh, now, you know, you're the solo voice in this. I saw the music and I could see what it was. And he said, then there's a little, there's some, some part singing underneath that. What group, what should we use? What singers should we use? And I said, well, the pro musica. I mean, that's, those are the singers that I work with. He said, uh, uh, why shouldn't we use the such and such group? And he named some others, and I said, well, listen to them. You'll know. And I'd, whether he did or not, I don't know, but we, we did use the pro musica, and that, that uh, uh, the background music for the Lark was lovely. And out of that came the Chichester Psalms and things that he did with that idea in, in mind. And um, at the same time, I was doing a um, lot of singing around the country. I'd sung with uh, Fritz Reiner and the, the Chicago Symphony, and I'll always handle, it seemed. I did a lot of uh, Messiahs and uh, Judas Maccabeus and uh, Samson and Solomon. I did um, um, Julius Caesar, the part of Sextus, in a, uh, a really it was quite a wonderful performance of the American Opera Society, Alan Oxenberg being the sort of impresario of that. And uh, they were very well received, the, the things that I had to do in those programs. I loved doing it. And uh, it was a, a great opportunity for me to sing some opera with people like 
uh, Elizabeth Schwarzkopf and uh, Cesare Sieppi sang the part of Caesar down an octave, which was in those days the way it was done because you didn't have a castrato around. And um, I did a, the sextus part, which was transposed up into a range that was comfortable for me, and it was a, a very successful and, and, and uh, rewarding uh, vocal experience for me to have that, plus a lot of other things. <laughs>